while it doesn't affect how well something works, when it comes to actually making money with supplements, it's all about marketing. You need some special form that allegedly absorbs better, or just the right ratio of different forms of the same thing, such as Inamin instead of plain old niacin. Another example someone called me out about in the last video is inositol. Someone was saying I didn't know what I was talking about because only a ratio of 40 times the d inositol to one part of myo-inositol was any good at all for women because that's what's in a woman's ovary. In reality, it probably doesn't really matter much, and if it is going to be proven to matter much, then I will tell you, such as with the choline and trimethylglycine, whether to use one or the other, uh, the one that is going to be best for growth of a child is 50-50, but for adults, you only need TMG, trimethylglycine. Also, keep in mind your body is generally very good at converting things into the proper form, especially when it would be only 2.5% that needed to be converted. This person didn't seem to realize d is simply regular inositol, but companies are glad to scam people and constantly promote this kind of malarkey. Keep in mind, while they can't patent either of these molecules, they can patent a blend of the two, or make secret proprietary blends, or they can make studies using this blend and then people are questioning whether just using the regular stuff is gonna actually do anything. It's a similar situation with carnosine. Carnosine has endless benefits and is very important it's a nutrient that's found in red meat, and it is very expensive if you get it synthetically. But beta alanine is a precursor to carnosine that turns into carnosine in the body, and that is extremely cheap. I've meant to talk about beta alanine for some time, but never got around to it. After that comment on the other video, I got to thinking of it Every again. So here you go. Are you talking to me this whole time? I, I was talking to whoever was listening. Fields miracle lagoons. I was in Jamaica and I got lost. First off, it's kind of interesting because a lot of the reason carnosine initially became a big deal was that data shows a lot of dietary carnosine is strongly correlated to good health and low cardiovascular disease and low type 2 diabetes. And dietary carnosine, of course, comes from red meat. So in reality, what this means is that the people who eat the most red meat are the healthiest and have the least of these diseases, even though it's promoted that it's the other way around. However, these same institutions are gonna deny this obvious fact, however, and they just keep going on about cholesterol and saturated fat, even though they're basically the healthiest nutrients you can take in. It's also been researched relatively recently as an anti-aging compound, and that's what's driven the demand for carnosine sky high. The main anti-aging benefit that excites people is its anti-glycation effect. It scavenges glycated proteins from the body and gets rid of them. This is also one more way that people who eschew meat speed up their aging process. Not only do they age their skin dramatically more from all the carbs they eat, especially with glycation, but they also don't get the nutrients that they need to fix the damage, which is mainly carnosine, which is not found in the plant kingdom. And carnosine is even able to neutralize methylglyoxal, which I've talked about in some other videos. It's a very nasty byproduct of carbohydrate metabolism. It's very poisonous. This is also going to help your endothelial cells quite a bit, which means the more carnosine you take in, the better your skin will look. It also means your blood vessels will be much more elastic and youthful. And this is no doubt the reason that carnosine has been shown to slow the progression of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, not to mention reduce high blood pressure. Since it gets rid of glycation byproducts like AGEs or advanced glycation end products, it also helps preserve the kidneys, which are very susceptible to glycation because your body will shoot sugar out through the urine to get rid of it when blood sugar is very high. And this leads to scarring and loss of kidney function. This makes it even more important for people with type 2 diabetes 
because it is high blood sugar and high blood pressure that mainly drive kidney issues in the body and type 2 diabetes increases both of these over time and they feed on each other in a vicious cycle. Amazingly, carnosine eye drops can break up cataracts and those treated show great improvement in this area in just a few weeks. The same effect should also occur if you take it orally, but it will probably take a lot longer and require a much higher dose. But as a preventative, it's probably going to help quite a bit to keep you from developing cataracts. Carnosine also reduces high uric acid levels, which really surprised me. I initially thought it might do the opposite, so I was very careful of taking beta alanine for a while. But it turns out it helps the body perform proper glutamine metabolism, which is a large part of the problem in people susceptible to gout. So yes, eating meat, especially red meat, is actually going to help with gout in spite of what many claim. Though I would say it's much better to eat meat that has not been aged if you're actually having a gout attack. Lipid peroxidation is when free radicals, aka reactive oxygen species, lead to the oxidation of lipids, that is fat. This is typically PUFAs such as linoleic acid. This leads to the formation of genotoxins like malondialdehyde that unleash havoc on your mitochondria. And this causes a lot of problems, including leading to cancer over time. Unfortunately, this is also a big problem in the brain because not only are neurons the most metabolically active cells in the whole body, but they are also largely comprised of EPA and DHA, which are also PUFAs. That means lipid peroxidation is a very destructive process for the brain. Thankfully, carnosine inhibits this process so that for a given amount of ROS produced, the less lipid peroxidation occurs. Instead, the carnosine sacrifices itself, as it were, so that your brain is protected from these highly destructive molecules. Interestingly, short-term carnosine supplementation is shown to increase cognitive performance in younger people, but not in older people. My guess is the effect in older people will mainly be avoiding more damage over time, not immediate gains. And the effect in the younger people is because it increases the energy capacity of their undamaged cells, and they have a lot more of these cells to work with. So in other words, it needs something to work with to make your cognition better, but don't discount its ability to protect mitochondria in the brain, especially in a stroke situation. During a stroke, you get excessive mitochondrial death due to glutamine release from dying cells, and carnosine reigns in the process and keeps glutamine levels from getting so high that it causes cell death from excitotoxicity. Your indolence is inefficacious. Oh? That means you're terrible! <laughs> Carnosine is also necessary for fat burning inside the mitochondria, and this is required to produce ATP. That means your ability to burn fat within cells is increased by taking carnosine, which is a critical sign of cellular health. It's also very important for exercise performance, and that's why carnosine and creatine are both well-known ergogenic aids because they allow you to create more ATP. In fact, these are probably the two best supplements when it comes to exercise performance. And you could probably skip all of the rest of them, honestly. Bicarbonate is also pretty good and it's cheap too, but it's kind of a pain. While creatine is a mechanism that recycles ATP and provides a bit more energy for max effort weightlifting and for short sprinting performance, beta alanine and carnosine are for slightly longer duration exercises. So it's not really great for weightlifting unless you do very high rep sets. But someone told me in the comments in a video where I mentioned it that it was very useful to him when he was a wrestler, and that makes sense. Like creatine, the extra energy produced by beta alanine in mitochondria is neuroprotective. This extra energy helps keep your neurons from losing mitochondria due to not having enough ATP to clean up reactive oxygen species when your cells are being heavily stressed. That's a good thing as the end result of mitochondrial loss is cell death. So like creatine, it is both an exercise aid and also a mental booster and neural protectant. However, on top of that, it also stops damaging lipoperoxidation 
which is very harmful to the brain and does much more. So it's even more helpful than creatine in this area, which surprised me a little bit. This even includes stimulating the growth of new neurons and nerves by stimulating BDNF and NGF. It also doesn't need nearly as large of a dose as creatine to get results, which is very convenient, especially if you take a lot of other supplements. Since it increases fat burning in cells, you might expect it will help with insulin resistance, and this is borne out experimentally. So whether you're in peak shape or trying to stave off aging, carnosine is the right stuff. Come on, Trudy. Here's the best pilot you ever saw. Huh? You're looking at it, baby. Carnosine is just beta alanine combined with histidine, a very common amino acid. Since the body constantly makes carnosine out of these two ingredients, and beta alanine is the limiting ingredient, it is more effective to take beta alanine alone instead of taking in carnosine, especially since there's an enzyme that slowly degrades carnosine over time. So if you wanted to get benefits out of carnosine, you would need some kind of slow release mechanism to keep your levels up. And some people do take those for cancer, for example. So in short, if you just take the beta alanine, you're gonna get way more bang for the buck. And speaking of bucks, carnosine is quite expensive. In fact, it's about 10 times more expensive than beta alanine. And since it has more of the active ingredient, and since carnosine degrades in the bloodstream, it's probably actually 20 to 30 times more expensive for the same effect. Beta alanine is a less complicated molecule than carnosine, so it's a bit easier to make. However, it is probably the anti-aging hype that keeps the prices of carnosine so high, even though tried and true beta alanine is dirt cheap. Eventually, this will probably change as more manufacturers start making the stuff, but for now, it's very expensive. For anti-aging purposes, I have often seen a recommended dose of 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day, but that is actually quite low compared to what's used for exercise performance, which is often three to six grams. Personally, I take about 1,500 milligrams per day, but you could take much more than that if you wanted to. Personally, I take about 1,500 milligrams per day, but you could take much more than that if you wanted to, and a lot of people do. Carnosine has endless benefits, but what you want to take is beta alanine instead due to being cheaper and not being broken down in the bloodstream over time. This then becomes carnosine inside of the cells. Once carnosine is inside the muscle or the brain, breakdown does not occur, but it does happen in most tissues of the body. Beta alanine competes with taurine and many other nutrients for absorption, so I usually take it before working out or else at any time away from meals and away from my other supplements. Basically just whenever it's convenient. Well, usually you get all the nutrients together when you eat. You don't want to cause an issue by taking large amounts around mealtime or around other supplements, though with the amounts that I take it probably doesn't actually matter. It also dissolves really easily and doesn't have much of a taste, so it's very easy to take so you can kind of just take it whenever. There's endless benefits for carnosine including for blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, skin and artery glycation, and much much more. I take 1500 milligrams a day, but many studies use 2 grams, 3 grams, or even 6 grams to get the best results. I mainly take it for brain and muscle health, but looking into it more deeply, it's yet another nutrient that most people should consider supplementing, especially if you don't eat lots and lots of red meat which most people today don't. And while you will get some in red meat, unless you're carnivore, you probably aren't going to get optimal levels unless you supplement. And there seems to be no real drawbacks to large doses. Just make sure they're taken away from meal time. Though it's popular lately for cardiovascular and anti-aging effects, the brain benefits are very compelling to me. Not only does it protect neurons and mitochondria from damage, but it can actually increase the health of mitochondria as well. And this is true for every cell of the body. 
It also stimulates NGF and BDNF directly, nerve growth factor and brain-derived neurotrophin factor, and these lead to the growth of new neurons and new nerve cells. This is why it can be helpful in neuropathy, which is one of the other reasons I wanted to talk about this. And everyone over 50 should consider daily beta alanine to prevent or reverse these effects, especially if their family seems to be susceptible to neuropathy or dementia. It also helps a lot in reperfusion injury. That is when you have a stroke and you have a lack of blood flow and then it comes back. For very large doses of beta alanine, you may have to take histidine as well to ensure you have enough to make carnosine in the body. But for the kind of doses usually recommended, this shouldn't be an issue. And I don't do it even though I take 1500 milligrams. It's just probably not a factor for most people. Carnosine also plays a role in inhibiting cancer growth and in autophagy. So while it's mainly known as an exercise aid in blood vessel dilator and more recently for its anti-aging effects, it should not be underestimated for its general health benefits. Since it boosts mitochondrial function, it's going to help with just about every health issue under the sun. I'm sure I'll address carnosine and beta alanine again in the future because there's just so much data out there to look at. But for now, I have some other very important work to see to.